for special today, I'm going to be singing um, Give Me Your Eyes. And uh, this song, I think, just should really speak to us because there's so many lost people out in this world. And the song is basically saying for God to give me his eyes so we can see who is lost and we can go and talk to the people. And, you know, we, we just need to be more aware around our surroundings because there's so many lost people. And we don't want them to go and die in hell and suffer. We want them to be with us in heaven and be happy and, you know, get God's love and grace. Look down from a broken sky, traced out by the city lights. My world from a mile high, rest in the house tonight. Touch down in the cold black tide, hold on to the sudden stop. Breathe in the familiar shock of confusion and chaos. Are those people going somewhere? Why? Give me your eyes for just one second. Give me your eyes so I can see everything that I keep missing. Give me your love for humanity. Give me your arms for the broken hearted. The ones that are far beyond our reach. Give me your heart for the ones forgotten. Give me your eyes so I can see. Busy street, see a girl in our eyes meet. Does her best to smile at me? I'm in sun to keep. As I mention to a bride, black suit and a bright red tie. To a shame that sells white feet out of work. Give me your eyes so I can see everything that I keep missing. Give me your love for humanity. Give me your arms for the broken hearted. Nothing that fly beyond my reach. Give me your heart for the one forgotten. Give me your eyes so I can see. Give me your eyes for the one forgotten. Give me your eyes so I can see. Amen. Thank you, Ethan. Isn't that what our prayer should be? Is that we have the eyes of the Lord that we can see all the people and the brokenhearted. And that's what it's all about, sharing the gospel. Thank you so much for that song. You know, I, today is Veterans Day. Um, excuse me, the 11th is Veterans Day. We want to celebrate that this is the Sunday before. And, and, and I got thinking about my sermon, and I got thinking about the election, and, and, and where do you go? 
And as I was reading, you know, I've been going through the book of Joshua, and as I, I've come into the last chapter, it, it just seems real fitting that, that this comes up right at this time. Just the way that God designed it. It wasn't my design, but, but I think this speaks so much for us and for today's time. More than it does actually, I, I don't say more than, but, but as much as it spoke to the children of Israel uh, at the time of Joshua. And then Joshua has been leading the children of Israel, and, and he has been a great leader. He's brought them through many battles, and, and through all of the victories, only one defeat, and that was that battle of Ai because there was sin in the camp, and they took care of that and went back, and, and they have, have now been in the, uh, uh, the Canaanite lands, and, and they've been there, and they're, they're, they're promise, uh, the promise that God has given them uh, of them inheriting the land that flows with milk and honey for houses that they didn't build, and for all of those great and wonderful things God has graciously given them. And I got thinking about our country, and I got thinking about what God has brought us through. You know, actually, Veterans Day was a, a celebration that was made uh, for the ending of World War I. On the 11th day of the 11th month at the 11th hour, the treaty was signed that ended World War I. It was actually called Amnesty Day. Through the years, they have changed it. And now it's called Veterans Day. And it, it, it's, it's to honor all of those that have served in the military. Uh, it, it, it's really designed to, to honor those that have, are still living, that has put on that uniform and has, has, has warred. If I'd asked uh, uh, for our veterans to stand, we would have uh, people all over uh, our congregation standing. We've got some even still serving today that that's puts on that uniform. And we're so thankful for those men and those women that are willing to, to put on that uniform, to, to sign that, that name at the bottom uh, of, of that, uh, uh, in, uh, at the bottom of, of uh, that uh, enlistment that says that, that I will stand up for the United States, for the greatness of the country. Joshua in his farewell speech in chapter 24 here sort of goes through some of that with uh, the children of the uh, Israelites. It says, and then Joshua gathered all the tribes of the Israel uh, to Shechem and called for the elders of Israel and their heads and their judges and their officers, and they presented themselves before the Lord. And Joshua said to the people, uh, thus says the Lord of God for Israel. This is Joshua speaking for God for them. For ancient times your father lived beyond the rivers, uh, namely uh, Terah, and the father of Abraham, and the father of Nahor, and they served other gods. Then I took your father Abraham from beyond the river, and I led him through the land of Canaan, and I multiplied his descendants and gave him Isaac. And to Isaac I gave Jacob and Esau, and to Esau I gave the Mount uh, Sirah uh, to possess it, but Jacob and his sons went down to Egypt. And when I sent Moses and Aaron, and I plagued Egypt by what I did in the midst, and afterwards I brought them out. I brought your fathers out of Egypt, and, and they came to the sea, and the Egyptians uh, pursued their, your fathers with chariots and with horsemen to the Red Sea. But when they cried out to the Lord, he put darkness between you and the Egyptians and brought the sea upon them and covered them. And you saw, uh, in your own eyes, saw uh, what I did to Egypt. And you lived in the wilderness for a long time. And I brought you out, uh, brought you into the, the land of the Amorites who lived beyond the Jordan. And they fought you. And I gave them into your hands, and uh, I took possession of their land, and I destroyed them before you. And Bok, the son of Zephyr, the king of Mo, uh, rose and fought against the Israelites, and I sent and, uh, and he sent and summons Balaam, the son of Bor, uh, to curse you. But I was not willing to listen to Balaam, so he did. Uh, so he so he had to bless you. And I delivered you, into, uh, delivered you from his hands. You crossed the Jordan uh, and came to Jericho. 
And the cities of Jericho fought against you, and the Amorites, and the Perzites, and the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Gershom, uh, Gershonites, and the Havites, and the Jebusites, though I gave them into your hands. And I sent the hornets before you, and I drove out the two kings of the Amorites before you, uh, but not by your sword or your bow. I gave you the land in which you had not labored, and the cities in which you had not built, and you had lived in them, and you were eating in the vineyards and the olive groves which you did not plant. Joshua has given them a, a history lesson. He says, I want you to remember where you come from. I want you to remember the blessings that God has given you all through the years. You know, a great history lesson for us, if we look at our country and goes all the way back to, to when uh, we, we came over and declared our independence and we had all those battles and fights, even all the way through the, excuse me, even all the way through World War I and World War II and Korea and Vietnam and the Gulf War and all of those battles, how God has blessed our country. If you go back and read and study history, and, and, and if my wife was here, she would point out to me if I was right or wrong. But, 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 but in most of the battles, there was one or two battles that was a turning point for the United States. We could have just as easily lost and been speaking a different language today. But I think God has blessed our country over and over again through all the battles and, and, and we've prayed for God to watch over all of our, 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 our soldiers as they're out fighting and all those different battles that God has watched over and has this country has become such a great country. I've had the privilege with the military and traveling in different places around the world and I can tell you, we have a lot of freedoms here that we just take for granted. We have the freedoms that, that, that we just take every day that we don't even think about. Where we want to live, what we want to do. What are we going to do with our lives? What does the future hold? In some places, you take an assessment test, and whatever that test is, that's what you do. The government sort of guides and directs where you go where you live. Some of the countries that I've been in, you, you're not even allowed to have the freedom of having a church like we have here. We can't gather, in, they, they can't gather in openness like we have in worshiping and singing praises to our, our Heavenly Father. They have to meet in secret churches. Don't, don't, don't get me wrong, God's Word is still growing, but they have to meet in secret churches. And if the, the gathering gets more than, than about 24 people, 25, they have to split because that's a gathering of people and the government starts taking notice. And what freedoms we have today. And yet in all the freedoms that we have, sometimes we lose our foresights. I think that's what Joshua was doing here. That's what, what he was speaking for the Lord here. He, he wanted the children of Israel, look at the history. Look what God has brought you through. And up to this day, look at all the blessings that he has given you. People often ask me, how you doing? My, my response usually nine times out of ten is, I am blessed beyond belief. And I truly am. God has blessed me over and over in abundance again and again. And if you look at your life, he's blessed you too. I mean, we, we all had food this morning when we got up. If we didn't, it was because we just didn't want to eat breakfast, you know. And, and, and we had clothes put on. And I'm looking around. I don't see anybody sitting here naked. I mean, you know. Most of us had to go in and say, what, what am I going to wear today? Well, I wore this last Sunday, and I, I, no, I'm not going to wear this. And, and, and you know, you, you try to pick and choose. you got so many clothes, you, you know. 
I went through my closet the other day and, and I was looking at my shirts and, and I'm thinking, I ain't got nothing. I mean, I just, you know, what, what am I going to wear? I, I had like 28 different shirts hanging up in, in one closet. And that's my short sleeves and, you know, my long sleeves are in another closet because of winter and summer. And I'm, what I mean, I ain't got nothing to wear. God has blessed me. God has blessed you. And, and, and I think that is the, 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 what, what Joshua is trying to say here. Don't forget your blessings. The psalmist says, and he loads us up with benefits. What's those benefits? The blessings that God has for us. Often we get down and depressed because things don't go our way. And, and, and we look around the country that we're living in. And, 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 you know, even with the elections and all of that, God already knows the outcome of all that before we even started. But I think in one way or another, God is shaking us and saying, you need to listen. I mean, you think of 2020, there's never been a year like 2020. You, you know? And, and it's so much confusion, and we've talked about since March and, and, and since, <coughs> excuse me, since the pandemic has come, and, and, and literally in churches we don't know what to do, and we try one thing, and we try something else, and we look, and we try to follow what the CDC has told us to do, and, and we try to help the spread of all of uh, the virus that's going around, and, and, and schools are shutting down, and businesses are shutting down, and, and churches are closing, trying to, to keep it all under control. And have we ever had a year in our country like this? But guess what? Through it all, God's still in control. I told you earlier that I, I really felt blessed that I, I think that I, I, I pastor one of the greatest congregations in, in Lauderdale County, and I would probably say in the state of Mississippi, you're so loving. And, 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 and we don't need to forget those blessings, and that's what Joshua is saying don't forget where it comes from. Man, I, I, I've seen God just bless families and, 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 and the household and, and, and where they're able to get boats and cars and, and hunting season. And I know hunting season comes up. I get in trouble every year, you know, when I talk about hunting. And people skip church to go hunting and they skip church to go boating. And God has blessed them and, and been able to buy all those things and they take those blessings and they run from God. I think that's one of the things that Joshua was pointing out here at the, the end of that reading that I was giving, uh, uh, that I was saying in verse 13, he's given you the land which you've not labored and cities which you have not built, and you live in them and you eat in the vineyards and the olives grove which you've not planted. The blessing that God has given us that he just gives us. And then he throws out that verse 14 and 15. He says, now therefore, now that you remember the blessings, now that you remember where you come from, remember where you were, and at any time and point, one decision could have changed your whole life in another complete direction. But remembering what God has done for you. Now therefore, Fear the Lord and serve Him in sincerity and truth. Oh, I fear the Lord. I, I think that's one of the problems that we have in America today as a whole is we don't fear the Lord. You, you go back to, to the times that, that, that they take testimonies and the times in the courts where you'd put your right hand on the Bible and, and you'd lift your left hand and do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help me God. And they put that in there because at those times people feared God and they dared not lie before God. And nowadays... Yeah, I swear to tell the truth, and I'm going to tell it, and uh, so help me God. And they get on the stands, and they say nothing but lies that come out of their mouth. They have no fear for God anymore. 
And I think that's part of, of what's wrong with our country now is, is our country has got away. We're so blessed. God has blessed us so much. We don't need to fear Him anymore. Look what He's done. And, and God is great and good. And, and God is so great and good. How is He going to send somebody to hell? I hear preachers talk about heaven and hell and, and God is so good and so gracious and, and they don't fear God and God is so good and He's not going to send anybody to hell. Guess what? They're not reading the same Bible I am. Because Jesus Christ says, I am the way, the truth, and the life and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. The only way to get to that heavenly home is through Jesus Christ. The only salvation that we have is Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior of our lives. But we got where we don't fear that anymore. And it says, fear the Lord and serve Him in sincerity and in truth. Oh, I, I'm going to fear the Lord and I, I'm, I'm going to serve Him. But listen to what else Joshua says. Put away the gods which your father served before the rivers... Uh, and, and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Put away those other gods. Oh, I don't, I don't have any other gods. I, I serve the Lord uh, God and, and, and Him alone. But you know what? It's, it's okay if, if, if I miss church here or there. It, 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 it's okay if, if I watch those TV shows, you know, at the house and nobody else is around that I'm not supposed to. It, it, it's okay if I do those things over here and there. I still serve the Lord. Joshua says, serve him with sincerity and in truth. We used to ask the people when we'd done interviews out at, out at the base, one of the, the questions that I used to always like to ask people at the end of, what is your definition of integrity? What, what's your definition of integrity? And, and, and most of them had the same answer. To, to me, the definition of integrity is doing what's right even when nobody else is looking. And that's a great definition. Standing in, to, in sincerity and in truth, keeping your integrity before the Lord, even when nobody else is answering. We had an interview one time, and I asked a young man about what was his definition of integrity. And I loved his answer. Never had it before. But his answer was integrity is doing what is right, even when people are watching. Think about that. Doing what's right regardless of who's watching you or who's not watching you. Because we can give in to peer pressure. We can give in to those things that are around us. Our integrity is doing what's right. Period. Serve the Lord with sincerity and in truth. And he says, put away those other gods. I want to ask you a question. What's between you and God right now? Are you as close to God today that you've ever been before? Think about that. Is there something going on in your life that's keeping you at arm's distance from God? Is there sin in your life that, that, that keeps you to coming before the throne of God? Is there something between you and God? You know, I've told the story before of a couple in the mid-50s that started dating and he had one of those pickup trucks that had the, the bench seat all the way across. You know, the old ones that now you got bucket seats. These had the bench seats all the way across. And as him and this young lady started dating, he would walk around and open up the door. The lady would get in the car. He'd close the door and he'd go around the other side. And the young lady as a date would just slide over there, you know. He'd put his arms around them, you know. 
And it was one of those, you know, those speeds, did the three on the column. You know, you remember those. Some of you don't, but, but some of you do. And you'd be riding down the road, and you'd throw that clutch in, and she'd change that gear for you. And you'd, you'd almost look like it was two of you having to drive that truck down the road, you know. And as they continued to date, and finally they decided to get married, and they got married, and oh man, he liked it. He liked when he cleaned that, that seat up, he'd put that little shiny stuff on the seat. So if she moved over a little bit, he could come around the curb, and she'd slide right back over to him, you know. Through the years, that, you know, he, he got where he would go over, and she'd get in the seat, and she'd close the door, and she'd stay over by the door. And he'd walk around and get in the other side, and they'd drive down the road. Through the years, they had sort of separated. And one day, he brought it to her mind. Baby, you remember when we first started dating, how close it was? Oh, yeah, honey. I remember you'd be going down the road, and you'd say, now. Nah. 